I don't usually reach out to ask for hardware to be sent over for review, but I did for this one. This is the Terramaster D4 SSD, and I wanted to get my hands on it because it has four NVMe SSD slots and a direct attached USB 4.0 40 gigabit connection. Now, obviously I do a ton of video editing and I do all of my editing directly attached, as in no network connections, everything is local. So I need as much space as possible, as fast as possible, and of course, directly attached. So let's check out the D4 SSD and see if it stands up to the task. This video is brought to you by Home Lab Gear. My home lab was a mess, so I designed and created a variety of different products to help me manage and protect all of my sensitive gear, and they're available to you too. Tackle the storage of your countless 3.5 inch mechanical drives, organize all of your random 2.5 inch consumer and expensive enterprise SSDs, protect all of your delicate NVMe SSDs, store all of your DDR DIMMs and those easy to misplace SODIMs, and collect and protect all of your expensive SFP transceivers. You can get all of these and more right now too, just head over to homelabgear.shop or check for a link in the description and get your home lab organized. Hey there home labbers, self hosters, IT pros and engineers. Rich here, this channel is no stranger to network attached storage made by Terramaster. We've had some good and some not so good entries come from them in the past. This however is our first look into their direct attached products, so let's get down to business, shall we? The Terramaster D4 SSD is a direct attached 4 bay NVMe storage device that measures in at 138 millimeters high by 60 millimeters wide by 140 millimeters deep. The entire enclosure is made of textured plastic with only a power button on the top of the unit. And around back, a USB-C interface compatible with everything up to USB 4 and Thunderbolt 4. The unit is powered by an included 12 volt power adapter that connects to the back of the unit via a barrel connector. Opening the unit is done by removing a single thumb screw on the back and sliding the inner tray up and out of the top of the unit. The D4 SSD supports four total NVMe SSDs via an AS Media ASM2464 PDX controller that provides PCI 4.0 by 1x to each of the four discs inside. At the bottom of the tray, there are two 50 by 50 millimeter fans that pull air up from the bottom and out the top of the case across the NVMe drives for cooling. Here's the kicker, the D4 SSD doesn't have any RAID functionality built in whatsoever, which means if you're looking for a direct attached box that you toss disks in and magically have a big pile of storage with redundancy, you're going to be disappointed. Any RAID-like redundancy or JBOD functionality has to be supplied by your OS, which as we all know, comes with at least some performance tax. So how well does it perform? Well, let's fill it with some SSDs, connect it to my Mac, configure it and run some performance tests. I'm going to be using some older 1TB Kingston NV2 NVMe SSDs I have laying around which will do nicely for testing. Installing SSDs in the D4 SSD is trivial. Just slip the NVMe's into their respective slots, screw them down, Terramaster even provides you a free screwdriver, slide the inner tray into the external plastic sleeve, replace the thumb screw, and we're good to go. As I mentioned earlier, I use a Mac for editing, so I'm going to be focusing on the built-in RAID tools that exist for Mac OS. I am fully aware of OpenZFS for Mac OS, and maybe that's for another video. But built into the operating system, there are only three different options for a software RAID. And that's a RAID 0, or striping data across all disks without redundancy, a RAID 1, which mirrors data across all the disks, and a good old-fashioned JBOD, which basically just adds all the disks together in one giant disk, again without any redundancy. No RAID 5, RAID 10, or anything else, which is a real bummer. That being said, we can still build out and test the performance of these options to see how well the D4 SSD performs overall. I'm going to be using two different testing tools that are commonly used to test the storage performance for video editing. The first one is made by Blackmagic Design, aptly called Disk Speed Test. Blackmagic Design is the creator of the much-loved DaVinci Resolve, used by countless video editors and YouTubers around the world. This tool tests the maximum disk performance and breaks down the different video formats that the storage will support in a nice little table. The next tool is from AJ Video Systems called AJ System Test Lite. It similarly tests storage performance as well, but for specific types of video format. I'm testing with both of these tools because there are a lot of video editors that will only trust one over the other. And there's nuance in the testing itself, so I want to be as complete as possible here. One more thing, along with the testing of RAID 0, RAID 1, and JBOD, I've also tested single disk performance so we can get a full picture of how well a single NV2 NVMe performs overall. Before we get to the results, I have a favor to ask. Most people watching these videos don't subscribe and I'd like to change that. So if you would, click subscribe below and help us out. It's the easiest way to support what we do here, it's totally free and it helps us immensely. Alright, let's get to the results. 
All right, up first are the results of the Blackmagic Design Disk Speed Test. The TLDR here is that, as expected, in a RAID 0 configuration, the D4 SSD moved nearly 3 gigabytes a second in read and nearly 2.3 gigabytes a second in write, which is impressive. RAID 1 read speeds were fantastic as well, but the write tax on RAID 1 seriously affected the performance. And lastly, both the single disk and JBOT speeds were essentially identical, as you would expect. Using the AJ Systems Speed Test Lite tool, we see essentially the same results with slight variations across all disk configurations. Again, RAID 0 is the real MVP here, with read testing coming in at 3.1 gigabytes a second and write testing coming in at a little over 2.5 gigabytes a second. Like the Blackmagic design testing, RAID 1 shows impressive read but absolutely trash write speeds. And both the single disk and the JBOD configs were essentially identical within a margin of error. Obviously, the results of speed tests like this depend on what NVMe disks you put into the system and what interface you connect the D4 SSD into. I chose these Kingston drives because they were on hand and because they're dirt cheap average NVMe disks that cost a little over $65 each. TerraMaster's own specs for the D4 SSD show that the system has a max read speed of 3,257 megabytes a second and a max write speed of 3,192 megabytes a second using Samsung 990 Pro NVMe disks. Those drives go for $300 online with the 1TB version going for $100. Compare the Samsung 990 Pro 1TB at $100 to the cheapy Kingston 1TB NV2 drives I used at $65 and for $140 in savings, you can still get incredible performance. But wait, we didn't even talk about how much the D4 SSD costs. And the short answer is, it's not cheap at $300 US without drives. Let's close up this video and get to my final thoughts. I'll be quick. TerraMaster built a solid little direct attached NVMe enclosure here. It's whisper quiet, even under load, fast as hell, assuming you've got good enough NVMe disks in it, and it is easy to use. I wish it had real RAID functionality built into it though. I'd love to be able to stuff in a bunch of four terabyte NVMe disks, flip a switch to RAID 5, and not have to worry about disk failure so much. At $300, it's going to be the type of purchase you make because you need what it offers specifically for whatever task you're working on, like editing and ProRes. You can find cheaper options for adding single NVMe's or multiple mechanical hard drives if you don't need that kind of speed that the D4 SSD delivers and only need more storage. When I pulled the unit out of the box for the first time, I'm not gonna lie, it felt cheap. And at that price tag, how you feel about it matters. But the good thing is it performs incredibly well and being made of plastic doesn't matter so much if it walks the walk. As long as you have backups of your data and you're not so worried about disk failure, you can get some absolutely incredible speeds out of this little device. And that'll do it for this video. Let me know what you think and we'll catch you on the next one. See you then.